Hi everyone and welcome. So today we talk about benchmarking MySQL databases. Now Sysbench is uh, a tool that allows testers and DevOps engineers to benchmark MySQL database by either using one of its bundled tests or custom Lua scripts. Lua is a lightweight programming language. Also Sysbench can benchmark systems that do not run any database at all as uh, it's able to measure I.O. and file system performance under stress, measure CPU performance under stress, measure memory reading and writing performance under stress, check whether mutex operations are likely to be the cause of performance issues, measure how systems perform with large number of concurrent threads with shared or exclusive locks. Although Sysbench can target a wide range of scenarios, this article only covers the execution of SQL statements to measure MySQL performance using bundle and custom Lua scripts. It should be noted that Sysbench benchmarks are meaningful to any environment, whether this is a virtual machine, containers, or physical servers based. Running bundle scripts Sysbench comes with a bunch of scripts that can be used to benchmark systems and familiarize with the environment. This article does not show the steps required to build and install Sysbench as they are av already available on the official website. Now, mm, once Sysbench is installed, the reader will need to configure the MySQL engine. Now, as a Sysbench targets the SB test database by default, this one will need to be created beforehand. Therefore, Assuming that the database engine is locally deployed, the following would be enough to prepare your system. So we are creating the SB test user, we are creating the schema of database, and then we give all the grants. Now, if your database is remotely located, then uh, you're going to have to have a different uh, SQL scripts, right? Now. Once the database is ready, we can execute one of the bundle Lua tests stored into the USR share sysbench directory. Your location might be different. Now, the following lines create the test table with the prepare command and then they run the actual test with the run command. So these are two different and separate instructions, right? Now, on a small virtual machine like mine, one gig of memory and one CPU, this is the result that we get. Pretty verbose, you're gonna get all the information that you need. That's a OTP read-only, so we don't have any write. The table are populated beforehand and then it starts with the SQL query. And if you look at it, we are passing all the necessary detail to create the connection, the port, the IP of the host, the user, and blah blah blah. Okay, now we're gonna use a small SQL query to see to investigate what has been done. Now with the uh, use and describe one of the table because we said we, are, we were going to create 10 table like and they're all the same so I just describing one of the table that we create because they're all the same and we were basically working on this structure over here right So all these tables were created with the prepare command, so here, while the run only executed uh, some select. And then we also set uh, a maximum time. After three minutes, uh, the execu execution will be truncated anyway. Now, all queries are located to do into the OTP ready uh, read only Lua script, right? Because this is the one that we select. Uh, so if you need to investigate more, you can just open the scripts. Finally, running this workload again will require the commands clean up and prepare to be executed first. So the clean up is going to be exactly the same like these two, 
but what it's going to do is going to delete all table so you're going to run the prepare again because you, you will need to create all the table again now probably here it might not be necessary to um, delete anything to run the test again because you're, you're, not, you're not running any update because it's just reading tables but you know just in case you want to get consistent result you would you would have to uh, run uh, the uh, cleanup again running custom scripts all scripts need to implement at least the prepare run and cleanup commands as a follow now the run command requires the thread underscore init to create a connection and initialize the environment the thread underscore done, which is the function that is called when the execution is finished. So this function is going to tear down the connection and clean up the environment. And finally, this function over here is going to contain all your SQL code, uh, basically all your actual tests, all the query and everything, right? Now for the prepare instead, uh, the prepare requires a custom Lua function registered into this hash over here according to the syntax that I'm going to show you later on and then the cleanup command requires the cleanup function which is going to clean up the, the database and the environment right now moreover the following store useful information these are all hashes um, I think this might be uh, then uh, this one defines the system, sysbench command line options that the script supports. This one contains sysbench command line options values passed by the user. So these are the options that the user has, has passed to the application. This one contains the command to execute. And this is going to give you the ID of the sysbench thread that is running at the moment. Now, I prepared a small template that you can use to implement your own test. Again, here, here, right? This is, uh, this is contains the command to execute. Is, if the user has not passed any, any, any command, then you're gonna tell uh, okay, no command is provided. Use prepare run clean, clean up or help, right? Now, next, uh, this one is going to specify the supported option for the test. Again, is this one, right? These are all the options that the user can choose from. In this case, I just implemented the auto commit. That's the init the one that created the database connection, the done, the one that is going to tear down the connection. This is where you're going to place all your SQL code, right? And then if you need to do anything the SQL can do, like uh, working on strings and doing some sort of advanced calculation, you can use Lua. And then here, this is the function that does the prepare for us so as I said before as I said before uh, this one the prepare require a function to be registered into this hash which is what we do here right we define the function over here and then here we register the function into this hash and then we also say that this command can run in parallel and finally we have the cleanup Again, these are pretty much all empty, apart from the creation of the base and tear down of the connection. You, you, you will need to populate those. And then, again, this custom script is going to be executed like a SATI, like we did it before. So with all of this option over here, and then the prepare, and blah, 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 the run. So nothing different. Uh, parameters are to be used to increase script flexibility as they can drive, for example, the number of tables to create, the number of rows to insert, delete to update, the program flows, because using option you can, you can toggle on and off section of the script, right? 
And if you seek for more information, I would suggest you have a look at the OLTP underscore common dot Lua script, which contains a lot of uh, setting up of environments, setting up of options, and blah, blah, blah. Conclusion. Using Sysbench, DevOps engineers and tester can quickly benchmark the performance of any system via bundle, scripts, or via complex custom workloads. This is the perfect tool to use to test changes to database schema of any sort of SQL code before they are deployed to production, benchmark and establish system to investigate any type of bottleneck, expand CI-CD cycle with automated performance testing, and identify hardware failures by stressing any component of a system. Thank you very much.